ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد الحمد لله والشكر لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise him, we glorify his sublime name, Jalla Thana'uhu. We ask him to send blessings and salutations and peace upon the best of creation, our master and liege lord, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon his blessed family, companions, and followers in excellence until the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his noble book, opens the book with the chapter of the opening or the opener, Surah Al Fatiha. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, opens the Fatiha with praise of himself. After the Basmala, after the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, invoking the name of Allah, the most merciful and compassionate, he begins, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That it's translated in different ways depending on the grammatical role of the alif and lam as well as the grammatical role of the lam in lil alameen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen uh, alhamdulillah that the it's it could mean all praise belongs to allah all all praise belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it could mean a particular praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And most grammarians said it means all praise, so it's universal. Every praise that exists in reality, in actuality, belongs to Allah. In the world of asbab, we recognize the good of each other, we recognize the positive aspects of the world, but at bottom, beneath all of the things of the world is the creator of those things, i.e. it is his fiat, it is his decree that's being manifested. So the praise in the world even, at an ultimate level, still belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, all praise is his, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but a minority opinion in our tradition is that it is a particular praise. A particular praise belongs to Allah. And what is this particular praise? And this has been attributed to Abu Abbas, Abu Al Abbas Al Mursi, rahimahullah, who said that he taught his students that this is the praise of Allah for Himself. It is a particular praise, namely Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's praise of Himself, because only He, Jalla Thana'uhu, truly knows Himself. لا يعرف حقيقة الله إلا الله. As our theologians say, no one knows the, 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 the full reality, the true reality of the divine other than the divine. Only Allah knows Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in a true knowledge, in a, in a complete knowledge. And so He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the only one who knows what praise is really His due. And out of a tremendous mercy to us, in this ummah, to our Prophet وسلم, and by extension all of us, he has revealed that praise of himself so that when we recite the Fatiha and when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we are not praising Allah based on our own limited knowledge and understanding of the Divine, but in reality we are simply reflecting Allah's praise for himself. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are, as it were, trying to be a mirror, a polished mirror, such that we can reflect the praise of Allah for Himself. And what an honor and grace that is to this community. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That this one particular praise, we have been honored that revelation has granted this at the very opening of the book. Allah's praise for Himself. 
Rabbul Alameen, and then he describes himself subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Rabb, the caretaker, the Lord, the master of Al Alameen, every single thing that exists besides him. Kullu Masi Wallah. Al Alameen is everything other than Allah. So whatever exists other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than the divine, Allah is its Lord and Master and Creator. And this is at the heart of Tawheed, the message of monotheism that all Prophets ﷺ brought to their peoples. Recognizing the oneness of Allah in the Alameen, in all of the events of the world. And this is a plural, the word is plural, so in all of the worlds, in all of the realms of existence, what is known to us and still unknown to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb of all of that, Jalla Thana'uhu. And so that's also reflecting something of hikmah, of human understanding of wisdom as to why Allah ta'ala is deserving of all praise, Rabbul Alameen. That this then, one of the key uh, akhlaq or the key virtues that we are learning from the very beginning of the Fatiha is shukr. Because the book begins with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and the entire religion can be expressed as gratitude. Why exactly is it that we have this moral responsibility and that we are obliged to respond accordingly because we, have to, we, we should be grateful for the gifts that we have been given. Ultimately, all of religion can be expressed as gratitude. Gratitude is how the Fatiha begins, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and unsurprisingly, gratitude is how the people of Paradise conclude their supplications and invocations. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ Rabbil Alameen. And the very end of their supplication and invocation is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Unsurprisingly, after Paradise, then what else other than to say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. La ilaha illallah. And according to some scholars of tafsir, this is not a, a one-time conclusion. Wa'akhiru da'wahum. It's not a one-time conclusion of their experience of paradise. Insha'Allah, all of us, Ya Rabb. But rather, every time the people of paradise invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they conclude with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. It is repetitive. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ Every time they make da'wah, du'a and invocation and supplication, they conclude with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So it begins, as it were, in the book of Revelation with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the whole thing ends, the people of paradise in paradise, experiencing paradise through the remembrance of Allah with what? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, repeated over and over and over. La ilaha illallah. So gratitude is at the heart of our religion. And so the first virtue, arguably, that we learn from the Fatiha itself, from the very key to the entire book, and the beginning of the key, the first verse, although there's khilaf amongst the fuqaha, but putting that khilaf aside, after the basmala, the first ayah that there is agreement on, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, what's the first virtue? We are called, we are, we are, the tarbiyah, Rabbul Alameen, the first tarbiyah through the Book of Allah in this verse, shukr to Allah, gratitude, gratitude. This should be the, the very stuff, the very matter that makes up our religious experience as individuals, as a community, people of gratitude. One of the ahadith describing the ummah of the Prophet ummatuhu al-hammadun that the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ is described, how are we described in the ancient scriptures? Alhamadun, those that praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people of gratitude, during good times and bad times, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet himself, ﷺ, what is his maqam called on the Day of Judgment? Maqam al-Mahmud, it's the praiseworthy station. Yahmiduhu al-awwalun wal akhirun all the people from the beginning and end, Praise him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of his role as intercessor, his intercession. But he's, he's worthy of that maqam because he's the Imam of the Shakirin, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His whole life is an expression, his blessed life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nothing but an expression of gratitude. And so then, Yahmiduhu al awwalun his very name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad, the one receiving all this praise, why? Because he praised Allah the most, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahmad. All of these meanings, 
Liwa al Hamd, the banner of praise that he that he bears on the day of judgment. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ummatuhu and his blessed ummah is what? Hamadun, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We should teach our children that this is this should be part of our vocabulary, an essential part of our regular vocabulary. Invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising him. Life is not meant to be a carnival or paradise. Whoever made that promise, all of the cartoons and stories happily ever after, not in dunya, that was a lie. Not in dunya. Dunya is dar of struggle. This abode is the abode of work, of labor. The Prophet وسلم, digging the khandaq, the trench, with the blessed companion saying, Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al akhirah. You know, this is not comfortable life, although we appreciate the comforts that Allah has given us, but that doesn't inform the essence of what this life is. The essence of this life is what? It's the digging, it's the work, it's the effort, which is one of the, one of the meanings of gratitude. One of, the, one of the meanings of gratitude is effort and, and labor and toil. And so, Ruwaym ibn Ahmad, one of the great early scholars of our tradition, a contemporary of Imam Junaid rahimahullah, in the third century in Baghdad, Ruwaym ibn Ahmad was asked, what is gratitude? He said, ashukr istivraadu taqa. Gratitude is to exhaust yourself of energy. If we're truly grateful, we'll work hard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbul Alameen, the one that's caretaking for all of our affairs by day and by night. If we're truly grateful, we'll find ourselves exerting something of energy, pushing ourselves you know, having uh, himma and ambition to do good, to increase the good in our lives, to increase the good in the people around us, to be people of service, to be people of mercy, to be people who provide relief to those people in difficulty. Why? Out of gratitude. This is part and parcel of gratitude. And this is one of the meanings of shakur. Because in the Arabic language, a person of gratitude, there's two main words. The shakir, shakir is a grateful person. Shakur is a more emphatic uh, pattern, as students of Arabic know. Sigha mubalagha. The shakur is not merely grateful at a basic level, but shakur is someone who's ever grateful. There's a deeper level of gratitude. And one of the, me one of the meanings of shakur, what, what, how, how is this deeper gratitude expressed through struggle, through toil, through labor, through hard work. And this is why one of the, this the Mufassirina pointed out in the verse, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ shukra, اِعْمَلُوا Work! O family of David, shukra, out of gratitude. So Allah Ta'ala has combined amal, labor, toil, work with what? Shukr. اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ shukra. O family of David, work out of gratitude. وَقَلِيلُ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ shakur. And there's that word, Allah Ta'ala says, and how few of my servants are ever grateful. In other words, the gratitude spills over into hard work, into labor, into spiritual struggle, spiritual works. وَقَلِيلُ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ shakur. How few of my servants are ever grateful. Connect it back to the first part of the, of the verse. اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ shukra. Work, put in the effort, O family of David, out of gratitude. And the hardest work is the work of the soul. And the most important khidmah, the most important service is the khidmah of the soul. It starts here. Everyone wants to change the world. How few of us want to change this world? Because there is a cosmos in the soul that reflects the cosmos outside. How many people take themselves to task before they take, they try to fix things in, in, their, in, in, the, in the world around them. So the, the, this, this mantra of social justice, and we don't deny the importance of advocating for just, cause, just causes in the world, but what about spiritual justice? What about the justice and the balance that's due to the soul, i.e. keeping all of these psychological f facets of the human soul in balance? Because it's not just qalb, it's not just the heart, but there's nafs, there's ego, there's hawa, there's biases and ideology and whims and caprice. 
There's shahwa, uh, uh, desires and passions that can be directed in the wrong. There's ghadab, there's anger. There's all these, there's so much happening in the soul, in the heart. So what about the justice? What about advocating for spiritual justice first before we become agents of social justice? Or at the very least, simultaneously. But to simply focus on balance in the world, but to forget all the imbalance of the heart, why would Allah Ta'ala give tawfiq to such people? Why would Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala give success to people who don't take the heart work seriously, the hard work of heart work seriously as a first priority? And this is clear from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And so, putting in the effort of rectifying the heart. Why? Out of gratitude. Because Allah Ta'ala has given us existence and He's given us all of our faculties and He's given us this precious heart that to throw it away and waste it for something, for some folly or some silly thing of this dunya is a travesty. So gratitude. And so another level of gratitude is the lowering of the ego. That's also an expression of gratitude. If, is keeping the ego in check, which is why humility is one of the most important elements and foundations of gratitude. Imam Junaid himself, rahimahullah, when he was once asked about gratitude, he said, A shukr an la tara nafsaka ahlan lil ni'mah. A shukr an la tara nafsaka ahlan lil ni'mah. Gratitude is that you don't see yourself as worthy of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Entitlement is the opposite of gratitude. Entitlement is a type of ingratitude. True gratitude is to be humbled, is to recognize that anything good that manifests on each of us is just the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's simply the favor of Allah. Even if we put in the work, even if someone spent decades to achieve a goal and they, were, they put in that diligent work and that hard work and they didn't waste their time, and then they achieved the fruits. That whole thing was a gift from Allah. And we don't deny the fact that there is a, there, there is a tremendous good in taking these means, but all of that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala could have sent a tribulation at any moment in those decades of hard work. If someone is puffed up, inflated because of their achievements, their lifetime achievements, what if they got in a car accident right in the middle that completely threw them off, off course? What if they lost their faculty of sight so that all that research they did, they, couldn't, they wouldn't have been able to do it, at least not in the same way? What if Allah Ta'ala sent, what if Allah Ta'ala, God forbid, you know, we don't ask, but just to recognize that we are living, we are being showered in, in blessings. To not take too much credit for whatever good we might be doing. No, the credit, the Fatiha teaches, where does the credit go? Alhamdulillah, all credit. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else in reality. And so yes, we recognize the good of one another, but all of that is rooted in tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And la tara nafsaka ahlan lil ni'mah. Don't see, we shouldn't see ourselves as entitled and worthy of whatever gifts Allah is showering upon us. No, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Abu Hassan al-Shadri rahimahullah, one of the great metaphysicians of our tradition, he said, min zahira o al-batina. He says, if you ever see anything good of your outward or your inward, فَقُلْ then say in response to that, Ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. Then say in response to that, it's only because Allah willed it. And there's no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the approach of gratitude. That the great inheritors of our Prophet ﷺ bequeathed unto us to learn something of what it means to be grateful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salli lahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad An-Nabi Al-Ummi Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Tislima kathira 
Abu Naim, the great hadith scholar who wrote Hilyat al-Awliya, one, one of the most important books, a critical book in our tradition, he relates with his chain of narration to Abu Bakr al-Warraq, an early, again, third century uh, scholar and inheritor of the Prophet Sallallahu from the Caucasus region, Abu Bakr al-Warraq, who said, Shukru ni'ma mushahadatul minna. Shukru ni'ma mushahadatul minna. Gratitude for a blessing is perceiving the divine favor. Gratitude for a blessing is perceiving the divine favor. Shukru ni'ma mushahadatul minna. In other words, it's a type of recognition recognition and knowledge and vision of the heart. To see, to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gifting this right now. And this is a very high level. And this is the level that the Prophets were at, alayhi salam jami'an. Recognizing al-mannan, shukr ni'ma mushahadatu al-minna. Al-minna is the favor from al-mannan. Al-mannan is one of the names of Allah, which means the one that gifts and gives favors and has the right to remind us of those favors. And this is what so many verses of the Qur'an, Allah Ta'ala is reminding us of all of these great ayat, these great miraculous, wondrous blessings that He's given us. Shukr al-minna, mushahadatul minna, recognizing that Allah is al-mannan in all of the good in my life, in all of the good of our lives. And going back to the verse that we cited earlier, I'malu ala Dawud shukra that work, O family of David, out of gratitude. Imam Qurtubi, in his tafsir of this verse, rahimahullah, or in his tafsir, he cites this verse and he relates a narration about Hazrat Nabi Dawud, salam, Prophet David, peace be upon him, that he was sitting expressing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he came to a realization, peace, peace be upon him, and he said, Oh Allah, how can I truly show you gratitude? How can I truly show you gratitude when my very gratitude is another blessing that you give me? How can I show you gratitude when my very gratitude is another blessing that you give me? And at that, Allah Ta'ala responded, Ya Dawood, Al-an qad araftani wa shakartani. Oh David, now you, you have knowledge of me i.e. at a higher level, because the Prophets always have knowledge of Allah, but even at an even higher level, and now you've truly shown me gratitude. To recognize that even, even, even gratitude is tawfiq from Allah. So we can't take credit even for our best moments. Our best moments are also favors from Allah. So we're left sort of empty. And when we're left empty, then we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Well, Allah gets all the credit. SubhanAllah. Then, then dhikr has some real meaning because we're really praising Allah at a deeper level. It's, we were kind of out of the picture. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And then in response, Nabi Dawood, Prophet David, alayhi salam, he says, Ya Allah, show me the most subtle of your blessings that, that people don't see. Show me the most subtle of your blessings that people don't see. And in, in that narration, Allah Ta'ala said to Dawood Alayhi Salaam, He revealed, Ya Dawood, tanafas. O David, breathe. Take a deep breath. Fatanafasa Dawood. So he took a breath. And this, was, this is the most subtle of blessings according to this narration. When's the last time we gave shukr for our breathing? And Allah Ta'ala responded in that narration, مَنْ يُحْسِي هَذِي النِّعْمَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Who could possibly count this particular favor by day and by night? Who can count the breaths that Allah gives us by day and by night out of gratitude? In other words, true gratitude is to say, سُبْحَانَكَ لَا أُحْسِي ثَنَاءً عَلَيْكَ As our Prophet said, وسلم, how glorious and wondrous and amazing and majestic are you, Ya Allah. We cannot enumerate, La nuhsi thana'an alayk. We cannot count and enumerate the praise and glory that, that you deserve. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. 
You, O oh Allah, are as you have praised yourself. You, as you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are as you have praised yourself. And returning back to the Fatiha then, what did Abu Abbas al-Mursi say about that first verse? That this is Allah's praise for himself. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is one particular praise, the divine praise for himself. And we have been honored to echo, as it were, the divine praise for himself because we can't figure out, we can never measure up in our minds and through our actions one iota of what Allah deserves in praise. We ask Allah Ta'ala to inspire us to be people of gratitude. We ask Allah Ta'ala to inspire our hearts to be grateful, filled with gratitude, such that it, it, it's expressed on our tongues and on our limbs through hard work and service and, and producing light and good by day and by night. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us true reflections of the description of this ummah wa ummatuhu al hamadun that we are people who praise Allah through good and through bad, in the good times, in the difficult times, in the sweet times, in the bitter times. We ask Allah Ta'ala to take away the complaints out of our hearts. We ask Allah Ta'ala to free our hearts of the shackles of ingratitude and complaining and see, the seeing negativity. We ask Allah Ta'ala to fill our hearts with seeing positivity, to recognize the good in the creation, to recognize what our Prophet taught us in the authentic hadith in Musnad Ahmad, inna kulla khalqillah hasan. That the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, verily everything Allah creates is goodly. That we ask Allah to fill our hearts with this recognition. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us true ambassadors and heirs of the prophetic way of our Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our beloved Prophet, and those true heirs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that conveyed and preserved for us this beautiful tradition. We ask Allah Ta'ala to rectify, to, to, to rectify our states, to alleviate us of our difficulties, to alleviate us of whatever difficulties we're facing as individuals, as families, as communities, as an ummah. Allahumma farraj anna wa anil muslimin fi kulli makan. Allahumma inna nasaluk al-afiyah fi dunya wal akhirah. Allahumma inna nasaluk al-afwa wal afiyah wal ma'afa tamma fi dunya wal akhirah wa li kulli muslim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sinna al-Muhammad al-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu as-salah.